Following the ambush and attempted murder of two police officers who were sitting in their squad car in Los Angeles when a black man approached and opened fire on them at point blank range before taking off on foot, and also just a few days ago, another black man opening fire on police during a Black Lives Matter protest against the decision in the Breonna Taylor case, which led to two officers being shot, we have to have a national conversation about the epidemic of violence against police officers, why it's happening, and how the media is both fueling it and profiting from it, and what our future as a country is going to look like if we don't reverse from this course of rejecting order because it's inconvenient to those who wish to create chaos, so do stay tuned. John Doyle in Heck Off, Tommy. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Tommy. We're going to jump around a bit, but I promise it'll all tie together nicely, so be sure to watch all the way through. But a couple announcements really quick before we get into it. Feel free to follow me on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated more often. That'd be very epic. But anyways, uh, the first thing, you might remember that we're planning a very epic party to celebrate the anniversary of the channel, which is in October. It's Hawk, thereby creating Hawktoberfest. Very high IQ, but we've expectedly encountered uh, some hiccups because of the lockdown restrictions. But we're working around that, so we'll send out the information to everybody as soon as we can. I'm not married to the idea of having it exactly on October 10th. We here at Heck Off Kami reject this fixation on time that we've learned is paramount to white culture. We want to give everyone enough time to, you know, plan their schedules around it, whatever. It's going to happen. It's going to be epic. We just have to jump through a few extra hoops, whatever. If you want more information on that, you can go watch the video that I posted a couple weeks ago about that bill in California that would make it easier for child predators to be child predators. I'll put a link to it in the description, but also after this video, going back out on the road to get more epic election season content for you guys, since evidently you like it a lot. So I'm going to try to get to as many Trump rallies as I can before election day. Speaking of election season, we're going full MAGA mode. We are all aboard the Trump train, full steam ahead. It doesn't matter what you think of his job performance. You might remember I've been critical of him from time to time when he doesn't follow through on certain things, but none of that matters. The overriding ambition from now until inauguration day is to demoralize the left, to just absolutely humiliate them, to drown them out with our high energy. It's like 3 a.m. for me right now. doesn't matter. The energy is still high. What do I look like? Sleepy Joe? No, no, no. I have dragon energy. Donald Trump is going to punish Joe Biden at the first debate, which is happening tonight. It's going to be brutal to watch, but, you know, it has to happen for the sake of our country. We're going full MAGA mode. We're going to make America great again. I don't want to hear any negativity. I don't want to hear, well, but what about this? What about this? And what about this thing? It doesn't matter. Shut up. You're wrong. You're a psyop. You're killing the vibe. You've killed the GC. And we're going to send you to go get re-educated after he wins again. But anyways, as you can tell, I'm very excited. We're talking about something serious, though which is that police officers are being targeted and killed by people acting in accordance with the narratives of the left. And I don't mean that this is happening exclusively because of the left's narratives, um, but the left has adopted the anti-police narrative and used their societal influence to propagate it throughout the country to every level of education and media. And the results of that have been ugly. I mean, we mentioned the recent cases in the beginning, which you might remember like five years ago. Um, a black man killed five police officers and wounded several others in Dallas because he wanted to kill white people and police and that he was inspired by the rhetoric of Black Lives Matter. We'll talk more about Black Lives Matter as we continue, but we all know the facts. I mean, we all know that black men are 18 and a half times more likely to kill a cop than to be killed by a cop. We all know that police aren't actually racist. There's no such thing as systemic racism. I've done two very in-depth videos on those topics that I will link in the description uh, for you to watch if you haven't already. But the reality that I think we're going to have to face is that these people don't care about facts. These activists don't care about the facts. And we can remind them that facts don't care about their feelings, but that's really nothing more than something that we can say smugly uh, to make ourselves feel intelligent and rational. But that's not actually an effective strategy for winning. Well, why does winning matter? Well, because if we don't win, then we lose. And if we lose, our country goes away. And there is no plan B. Plan B is a cope. Plan B is a skateboard company. It's also a contraceptive. It is the sexual equivalent of bulimia for college girls. We're off topic. The point being that focusing on a plan B for if and when America falls is a cope because it allows you to tell yourself, well, you know, I don't need to do anything now. I'll just wait for the time to be right. And then, then I'll do something. Then I'll execute plan B. It's lazy. Act now. Fight back now. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't prepare in case of failure. But if you're basically refusing to take action now because it's more convenient for you to do it later, you're a fool. Here's a thought experiment. Do you really believe that if you could communicate to these activists that what they're fighting against is a myth? You've got everything in a speech, maybe a nice infographic, whatever you want to do. Do you really believe that they would all of a sudden join your side with the same passion? They wouldn't. And the reason for that is that what is fueling their activism isn't facts and logic. It is passion. It is emotion. Ask yourself this question. Could anyone ever convince you to stop loving your country? Probably not, right? 
Does this mean that you have a closed mind? Does this make you unreasonable? Are you unreasonable if you refuse to hate your country? Maybe. But maybe it isn't actually unreasonable to refuse to concede your identity and to concede that it matters. I will never renounce Jesus Christ. I will never stop loving my country and I will never give up my guns. Or, you know, at least the ones that left after that terrible boating accident, right? The point being that in the abstract, if we write this out with a pen and paper, maybe this makes us unreasonable. Like if we hypothetically were presented with the necessary evidence to convince us of these things, if we still refuse, maybe that makes us unreasonable. And so most people would say, well, you know, I suppose you might be able to convince me to believe you if you had X, Y, or Z, but that's impossible. You'll never have that. There's no way. And that's because our allegiance to our identity will always take precedence over facts and logic. And my identity is that I'm an American, but these activists don't see themselves as Americans. And this is the core of our problem here. These activists have made their identity that of the eternal victim at the hands of America, but more specifically, white people. Don't be fooled. Black Lives Matter doesn't hate racism. They themselves are racist. They just hate white people. That's really what it comes down to, because you can point out the hypocrisy like, well, now wait, well, if you hate racism, why are you doing all these things that are so clearly racist? Now, no, wait a second. If you think that racism is a problem, well, why don't you just look at this data that disproves that? None of that matters to them, and none of that will ever work, because it isn't about that. And not everybody shares these feelings, but the movement is being driven by people who do. They hate racism and they want to eradicate it. And they also believe that white people are inherently racist even after being re-educated. Do the math on that. And this is not my belief. This is my observation. And there is a difference. The point being that these people are not acting on behalf of data. They're not acting on behalf of truth. They're acting on behalf of their identity as separate from America and supposedly as those exploited by Western countries. And for that reason, they are not looking to concede. They are looking to conquer. And convincing these activists to abandon that is no different than trying to convince me to turn in my ARs. I won't do it. Maybe that makes me unreasonable. Maybe that makes them unreasonable. We can point fingers all we want, but at the end of the day, we are not looking to cede ground to these people and we are not looking to lose we are playing to win and after that i would love to grab coffee i would love to debate tax policy i would love to debate investing in public works projects during recessions whatever you want i'll even pay but you will not gain an inch of ground on me with the idea that i'm inherently racist and evil because i'm white or that my country is racist and evil and needs to be fundamentally decomposed to be more accommodating to the activists who hate it i won't even entertain those ideas with a discussion i won't even give those ideas respect but i will allocate everything in my power towards crushing them into the ground and burying them and some people might be thinking well, now, wait a second. What about free speech? Well, are you saying that you don't like free speech? I didn't say that at all, no. But free speech is a bumper sticker, right? It's just words on paper. What is real is that people have hidden under the cloak of free speech to indoctrinate generations of people into hating their own country. And this just isn't sustainable. Look outside. Look what happens as a result. Billions of dollars in property damage, dozens of people killed, police officers murdered, livelihoods destroyed because the people who hate this country used one of its blessings to destabilize it and bring it to near collapse. So to answer that, no, I have no issue with free speech at all. But what they're doing, is that really free speech? Is that what the founders intended? Did George Washington want you to have free speech so that you could be brainwashed into hating his country and then be compelled into destroying it? Like, why is it that I can't yell fire in a crowded theater, but these journalists can get on national television and deliberately mislead and even lie to the public, which then causes complete chaos and everything else we just talked about? That's not news. That's not even free speech. That is treason. And again, we're not talking about thought police. We're not talking about restricting free speech. We're just saying, hey, uh, you know, maybe we should stop pretending that telling millions and millions of people that America is an evil, racist country that needs to be fundamentally altered. And if you use violence, don't worry, we won't cover it. Maybe it's time that we stop pretending that that is the same as me saying, yo, I literally cannot find a picture of Michelle Obama pregnant. That's a straight up dude. Like, those are not the same. Do you really want to live in a country where these people have complete control over the narrative so that they can convince people that you are inherently evil and oppressive because you're a straight white man? And now there's a mob outside your house with no media to cover it conveniently. And you're just like, God bless America. I may not agree with you convincing tens of millions of people that my existence in this here country is an obstacle to their utopian society, but I would defend to the death your right to do it every day of the week and twice on Sunday. God bless America. You're not going to like this, but it's late. The self-imposed do not say boundary is becoming less clear to me. Why do you think conservatives champion free speech so much? Why free speech? We care about a lot of things, all sorts of things. But why is it that everywhere you look, you always see specifically free speech? It's because we have to, and they don't. They have control. We were lazy. We were stupid. So they came through like, oh, yeah, uh, free speech or whatever. And then they went ahead and took control of everything. And now they're kicking us out of the discussion. And we're like, um... But what about free sp And then we get cut off. So when you see conservatives championing free speech, of course, it's because we do actually believe in it. But don't forget that the reason that we have to spam it is because at this point, we're just begging to keep a seat at the table.
Um, can I have some free speech, please? I let you convince the country that my existence is the only obstacle to their utopian society, and you won't let me show them some facts that prove otherwise without shutting me down, and well, I think that's a bit unfair. Do you think they care? Do you think they care about what's fair to you? You are not a person. You are an obstacle. They don't believe that human life is universally valuable. They don't even view children that way. Just look at their attitudes towards abortion or even infanticide uh, with the more honest ones. They regard life as of conditional value, and maybe they'll employ arbitrary metrics like sentience or viability with abortion, but in our case, all that matters is whether we're in the revolution or in the way of the revolution. That's a joke I have with some of my friends in conservative media, like, hey, at least we won't ever live to see a socialist regime, right? Because they'll just purge us within the first week. And that's what you have to realize. These activists literally believe that you are the only thing standing in the way of their utopian society. They literally believe that if it weren't for you, the pesky conservative, they could just have this huge extravaganza. It'd be like the opening of, uh, of Curious George, where he wakes up, upside down, starts playing in the background. Everyone's having a great time, right? They're painting. All these different species are just hanging out. Oh, look, the leopard's hanging out with the zebra. Pff, I didn't know they got along. Hey, I don't know, man. I don't make the rules, right? That's what they think. That's what they think is going to happen when you're gone. They're going to wake up. Upside down is playing. They jump out of bed. They go outside. There's this big street festival. Every culture has its own booth. They're all making food. They get down there. Someone puts a plate in their hand. They start to walk by. People are like tossing different food from the booths onto their plate. It lands perfectly on the plate every time because physics being uncooperative was a symptom of whiteness. Now people are dancing. They form like a circle. Mexican guy jumps in. He does some dance, right? Indian guy jumps in. He does his little dance. White guy jumps in. He does a dance. Everyone laughs at the white guy because remember, in their perfect world, you're still going to get pissed on. Now there's a conga line, there's confetti, there's balloons, Upside Down by Jack Johnson is still playing. That's the best part though, because at the end of that song, it gets sad and it's like, please don't go away, is this how it's supposed to be? And in Curious George, that's when all of his friends have to leave. That's going to be us in the extravaganza, bruh. <laughs> that's going to, when the ICE agents show up and they just start arresting all these people for being here illegally, just please don't go away. You know, they're getting in the ICE vans, the party's over. I'm not even joking. Like these people think that we're the only thing standing in the way of this grand multicultural upside down musical sequence and you might think that's offensive but you know what i find more offensive is that these people think that culture can be reduced to food these people think that culture can basically be reduced to the elements of a block party things like food music and dancing everything else uh, is the same except for those and it's funny because when you're a rich white liberal living on the coasts you can get away with thinking that because that's what it is where you live those are the only differences because those are gated communities and you're in a bubble try to go to pakistan or libya and run the upside down hypothesis watch the theories and abstractions of your seven-year humanities degree melt away in the face of the reality of cultural differences. And this gets us back to the police. And let me first say that I'm not a bootlicker or anything. You know, I say blue lives matter in response to black lives matter because black lives matter is fundamentally anti-police. And I do believe that blue lives matter, but I'm also skeptical of police because we have to remember that they would be the ones just following orders and arresting you for hate speech or taking your guns or whatever. And of course, not all of them would do that, but they would be the group that would be doing that if it were to happen. So that's just something that we have to keep in mind. But why do you think the police are being targeted by these activists, by these revolutionaries. Um, very simply, it's because they are not at war with America as a nation, in which case the military would be the target. Uh, and this is largely because they're not a foreign enemy, but rather a domestic enemy. They're already here. They've already taken control over much of the country. So it's not a war against America as a nation, but rather a war against America as an idea, uh, as a society, and as a culture, all of which are upheld by institutions such as law enforcement, which is why they must be targeted and targeted violently in many cases. And that's why it isn't just white police officers anymore. We've seen the way that they've treated uh, non-white police officers. In many cases, it's even more disgusting than the way that they treat white police officers because they view them to be race traitors. But it isn't about racism within law enforcement anymore. That's why minority cops can't even catch a break anymore because it's about law enforcement in general because law enforcement serves to maintain the traditional American society and destroying that is their ultimate goal. And police officers in themselves actually represent the antithesis of leftism, which is to say that human beings are not actually fundamentally good. And because of that, we need police officers to enforce order. We can't can't actually have your perfect communist society. We can't actually just have the upside down multicultural musical sequence. Like it's not that simple. But what is simple is the fact that law and order are the cornerstones of prosperity. And what that means is just that 
Without law and order in society, you literally can't have anything because to have something requires stability in some capacity, and lawlessness is not much more than total chaos. Without order, there cannot be prosperity. And additionally, there cannot be freedom. Freedom cannot exist without order. The reason that you are theoretically free in this country is that if someone tries to infringe on that, then the government will prevent that or, or, or punish them, or in some cases, both. Uh, someone tries to steal your car, you call the police, they get arrested. Now we're supposed to believe that the police officer is the bad guy. There's been so much talk of that for the last few months that I've actually went ahead and I looked through the Washington Post database of police shootings, which has kept track of all these cases for years. They've got all the data. So I went ahead and I did a search for how many unarmed black men have been killed by police in 2020. Would you like to know how many? It has been eight. So I thought, no way. Can't just be eight. What if we include unarmed black women? So I did that. It increased to nine. Would you like to guess how many police officers have been killed so far this year? It's about 40. And about a quarter of them died from being ambushed. And as we've said, the media is complicit in the murdering of police officers because they profit uh, from the attention given to these negative and racist encounters, or they portray them to be negative and racist so that they can profit off that. And as a result, people are taught to hate police and in some cases even take violent action against them. And it continues to get worse. The media literally profits off getting police officers killed. And it coincides perfectly with the agenda to which the vast, vast majority of them subscribe. And what do you think is gonna happen? What happens when generations are raised to believe that cops are evil? You know, when I was little, we had the rescue heroes, things like that, right? I don't know if you guys remember those, uh, but the premise was these masculine men working as policemen or firefighters or whatever, they would save people. That's it. And it was epic, right? Even ignoring how progressive Disney and Marvel have become, there's something more effective about teaching kids the nobility of realistic sacrifice and courage. Like Iron Man is never going to save your family, but 90% of the police in this country would risk their lives to do that without hesitation. It happens every day in this country. But what happens when we teach kids that police are actually the bad guys? I mean, we even had people complaining about Paw Patrol because it was showcasing police in a relatively positive light. What happens when Paw Patrol gets canceled? Maybe not because of the woke mob, but just because, you know, the ratings go down, whatever. Do you think something will replace that? Are we ever going to be allowed to portray police positively again? And if not, what are the implications going to be in our society? What happens when the media doesn't care about you? The universities don't care about you. Education in general doesn't care about you. Hollywood doesn't care about you. Employers don't care about you. The only institution that still does care about you, only because they have to, is law enforcement. What happens when they're under attack? What happens when they're crippled? Just some things to think about. But of course, we're going to make America great again. We're going to hold the White House. So don't even worry. Don't even worry. High energy only. Full steam ahead. Make America great again. Let's go. Hey, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave it a comment. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. Share it with a friend. Go to heckoffcommy.com. Get a membership. Very epic. Put the MAGA hat on. Don't take it off. Ever. Ever. Even if, even if someone is like, hey, take that hat off, sir. No, no thanks. I think I'm going to keep my hat on forever. Was it obvious that I haven't slept in like two days? <sighs> we'll see. But thank you so much for watching. I mean, God bless America. You can kind of tell with my voice, I think it got raspier quicker. It's interesting because uh, this is like my normal speaking voice, but I found that I can project my voice better when I'm like up here. So this is the heck off commie voice, right? So we have like, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to heck off commie. But like, if we're just talking, it's like down here, which is weird. And then it gets lower. It gets down here. Is that you, John Wayne? Is it me? Who said that? Who the heck said that? Remember that? Full Metal Jacket. I wonder how much of this I'm going to leave in. Probably all of it because authenticity is key. Integrity is key. Transparency is key. That's why we're successful. That's why we're epic. That's why we're going to win. That's why we're going to continue winning. Make America great again. And then also keep America great. You may think you might think that these don't coexist because they're kind of you know establishing separate separate uh, premises, but they do. And if you don't get it, you're just you don't have the cognitive capacity. It's not my fault. It's not like my error. I'm not wearing contradictory items of of clothing. Um, it makes sense to me because I'm a genius, 
And if, if you take issue with it, it's just because you're literally not intelligent enough to understand the message that I'm sending here. Um, yeah, so you should, uh, you should, you should work on that. Okay. Well, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Poof.